Okay, our next speaker is a business owner, he's a political activist, and he's a gun-loving American. Please welcome Adrian Murray. I think we need a mic check for the people out back. How many of you here believe in the Second Amendment? I think it works. I have some advice for you, free of charge. As this debate over gun rights and gun control and the Second Amendment heats up, and it will heat up, prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves for the favorite tactic of those who would deny your freedom. Prepare to be ridiculed. They will say that you are a gun nut. You will be told that you are an extremist. You will be told that you are a racist. You are to be told that you are paranoid and delusional. They will seek to demonize you. I say to you, Texas, stand tall. You know what you have here in America. Never let them take it away. There are those who say that fears of government tyranny are unfounded fears, that it could never happen here. Now, it may not occur in our lifetimes. It may not even occur in the lifetimes of our children, but that's not the point. Tyranny always seeks to re-emerge. And what we do here today in our time may well determine if it ever returns again. Our founding fathers risked their lives and their liberty so that we could be free. We must do no less. I want to tell you a story. It begins nearly a century ago on a clear spring morning of April 24, 1916. There existed a people then who suffered under a brutal tyranny for centuries and who on that day rose up to claim their freedom and break the shackles that had bound them. 1,600 there were who took to the streets that day. 1,600 facing 16,000. They erected barricades in the streets and proclaimed their independence. They declared that the post office in the city center to be their headquarters. And upon its roof, they unveiled their new national flag for all their countrymen to see. And they waited. They waited for the promised delivery of a shipment of arms with which to defend themselves. A shipment of arms which never arrived. Within days, hundreds were lying dead or dying in the streets. Thousands were imprisoned. The leaders of the rising were rounded up and summarily executed. Robert Butler Yates was moved to write in a poem called Easter 1916 that from their blood a terrible beauty was born for it inspired the people to continue their struggle and after five hard years Ireland won her independence from Britain, just as America had done 140 years before. Now, I know this 
story well. I have walked the Dublin streets where heroes fell. I have placed my fingers into the bullet holes on the still riddled walls of the post office and tried to imagine what it must have been like to face down the tanks essentially unarmed. This story is very dear to me. For when I was just a boy, it was told to me in words and in song by an old woman who when she was just a girl had bravely stood upon those barricades fighting for her freedom and tending to the wounds of her fallen friends and comrades. That woman's name was Annie O'Hagan. Seventeen years after the rising and twelve years after the birth of the Republic of Ireland, Annie O'Hagan too gave birth to a little baby girl who one day would give birth to me. Whether we know it or not, we leave our fingerprints on the fabric of time. once where she had found the courage to do what she did the will to risk losing everything over what seems to be such a hopeless cause after all I had been raised in America I had never known anything but freedom I had never felt the tyrant's lash and she told me she told me, you do not know what you have here. Never let them take it away. Yeah. I did not know then what she meant. But I do know now that the tyranny that my grandmother risked her life to overthrow is the very same tyranny which our founding fathers risked their lives, their fortunes, their sacred honor. We can do no less. We must never let it emerge again. We are not called upon today to shed our blood in exchange for our freedom. We are called upon, however, to honor the sacrifices of those who did, all those who now rest neath flag-fueled fields and cross-covered hills in every corner of this earth. We are called upon today to heed the warning of our founding fathers who knew that freedom could be a fragile and fleeting thing, who knew that if the people were not vigilant, that liberty could vanish like a puff of smoke in a warm breeze, and who knew that in order to defend a secure state, the right of the people, the inalienable, inalterable, unretractable right of the people to keep and bear arms must not, cannot, and shall not be infringed. <laughs> Tyranny may not arrive in our day in our time. It is upon us that the future 
depends. We are the guardians. Let it not be said that we here today do not know what we have here in America. Let it be said and let it be clearly understood that we do know what we have here, we shall protect it, and we shall never let them take it away. <laughs> when the history of these days is written, let it be said that in this time and in this place, Texas stood strong, placed our faith in Almighty God, and preserved for future generations of Americans the same precious liberties that were preserved for us. Thank you.